Hey everyone, welcome to Limitless Radio Cast, episode 43. Wherever you're at, turn up the radio, sit back, relax, put on those headphones, and enjoy the show. We'd like to thank True Tubes Tattoo Supply for sponsoring this show. All you tattooers out there, go out and get all your equipment, your inks, your needles, your pens, your PPE, anything you need for tattooing, True Tubes Tattoo Supply has you covered. Limitless, at checkout, get a 10% discount. Check them out. Remember, stay true. We'd also like to thank Magic City Brewing Company located in Akron, Ohio. For all your wonderfully great crafted beers, check out Magic City Brewing in Akron, Ohio. Remember to go out there and check out RollAmongUs.com also. For all your fight gear needs, they have fight shorts, geese, standard geese, lanky geese, rash guards, anything. Some t-shirts, sweatshirts, accessories. You want it, they got it. RollAmongUs.com, Limitless20 at checkout for a 20% discount. Check them out. Also, go out there and check out BattleBomb.com. Limitless20 at checkout for a 20% discount. They have CBD and non-CBD rubs for those aches, pains, those muscle strains. Put it on rub it in gonna feel great trust me try it out a little bit see what it does i'm telling you right now i use it all the time it's gonna feel great remember battlebomb.com limitless 20 at checkout hey everybody welcome to the show hanging out with an amazing guy today chad the savage george he's a brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and owner and lead instructor at california mma fitness in los angeles california he's also a retired mma fighter who has fought at the highest level with promoters WEC and Bellator. He's also a three-time IBJJF world champion. He's a husband, a father, and a mindset coach and mentor. Chad George, thanks so much for hanging out with us, man. We appreciate it very Very much. much. This is what we do. Hang out and chat about BJJ and all that good stuff, man. So how's life treating you? Awesome. Everything's good, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure, dude. Definitely. I'm sure you have some better weather out in LA than we have in uh, Canton, Ohio <laughs> right now. It's you a little. I, I wish I could say we do. The weather here has been absolutely terrible. Oh, uh, has it? Been cold. Oh man. It's been, it's the rain has been relentless. Um, it's been cold. And then everybody is sick with either COVID or the yeah. flu or now they're something. Saying, now, but now they're, they're, they're saying flu Rona. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right on. It's so bad. It's so bad. I'd probably, take it, I'd probably take it. I'd probably take it though, Chad. It, it's 19 degrees here right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 19, yeah, and there's a little bit of snow out there. A little bit. <laughs> well, I was just in. Um, I was just in Niagara Falls, Canada. So, oh uh, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, hey, man, d- tell us a little bit about you, like your background. I know you wrestled. Okay. You wrestled in high school, right? You got a wrestling yeah, background. So I grew up. Go ahead. Yeah, I grew up. I grew up. In, I grew up wrestling. Um, from Sacramento, California. I started wrestling actually in junior high, um, and then I got into high school wrestling, and then from there I wrestled in junior college. And I mean, I was a decent wrestler. Nothing incredible, you know. I was I was a good athletic wrestler, but sure. I didn't really have the um, the mindset to beat the elite guys in the game. I probably had the technical ability to be able to match them, but when it came head to head, I just wasn't there. Sure. And um, I was my own worst enemy. And then I got into uh, jiu-jitsu and MMA when I was 21, when I moved to L.A. to go to art and film school. And now I am this year, I'll be turning 40 years old. And I've been training and competing pretty much ever since. Nice. Welcome soon to be 40 Club. Because uh, <laughs> Chad Kuhn and myself are in our 40s. So. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's a compliment to the club or if I it is. A, you know, like, you know, like sometimes those cool clubs, you get like a credit card and they <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think There's... it's one of those clubs. No, <laughs> it's no, no, you don't get no credit card. You just get, you know, the guys in the, you know, when you're training. <laughs> BJJ, you get some ointment, right? you get you get some ointment to run on your sore, yeah. sore bones, sore after, muscles. After class. <laughs> Where are you yeah. guys going? Uh, I got a tub, a tub of ice over there that I'm going to go sit in for a while. You guys go do what you're going to do, man. <laughs> That's yeah, how I it do is. This thing, uh, when I share with my younger athletes, I call it a coach's trick where I come in at the last round and I whoop all of their ass. <laughs> and then it, <laughs> just so they remember, you know, that I still got it. Like, you still got it. Coach is still a beast. I'm like, listen, I just came at the very end. I cheated, but, <laughs> you know, I, but I got, I got to uh, give them that reminder. 
Yeah, for sure, man. And I mean, you know, like as you train, you train smarter, obviously, too, as you get older, you know, and you've been around it for so long, even with wrestling. I mean, you get disciplined, like cutting weight, you know, Chad, uh, Chad Kuhn and I, we talk about it all the time. Like some guys will go into their first competition and they're like, oh, I got to cut weight. And it's like, well, if you've never done it before, it's not a good idea. Like just go into whatever you're weighed in, you know, like you did that. Did that help you wrestling though? Like give you a different mindset when you went into BJJ or was it just. Not really, because, you know, the way I used to cut weight and the way weight cutting is done now, two completely different. Oh, worlds. yeah. I mean, yeah, way different. You know, we're, 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 we're talking in the 1990s, right? When I'm <laughs> cutting weight back then, when, you know, it was spit in a cup for a week, chew on ice cube, yep. and then eat, eat a Subway sandwich after weigh ins and then go compete. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Run That's around the mat. Exactly <laughs> yeah, terrible. Terrible. I remember when I wrestled, there was a couple times, I'll never forget it, man. My coach was all over me because I'd be a pound off. And then it was like, even stripping down all the way down, hold the towel up in front of you. And it would be like, yeah, Seton, you're still a pound over. Get out there and get all those clothes on, get some winter jackets on, get running around the mat in front of everybody that's already there. And you're like, yep, this is awesome. Sit in the bathroom for a while. <laughs> I don't miss yeah, that no, part, Definitely though. not fun, but no. you know, now, but now there's, there's, there's so many different, you know, I, don't, I guess you could say sciences, but there's so many different ways of doing it much healthier. And, you know, I think I've had my hand in almost every experimental way of doing it over the years. Sure. And now I finally have ways that at least work for me. And I try to hand that off to my athletes, uh, ways that work for them. And I'm constantly still learning as well. You know, that's one of the things that I love about being a coach is that I'm not fixed on any of my ways. If something else is a new tool that I can bring to the table, I want to dissect it and see if it's something that I can give to my students and athletes. That's what makes it so awesome. Just hearing that because, you know, you come across a lot of coaches, uh, Chad Kuhn and I talk about it all the time. There are different people you're always come across and some people are just set in their ways. Even if they've done it for 30 years, 40 years, they're like, I'm not changing. This is how you do it. And I'm always like, you can't succeed and that you're willing to grow outside of that. And if it's got to come outside of your comfort zone, then step outside of your comfort zone. It's only going to make you better. And that, I mean, hearing you just talk like that sounds like that's what you're doing for your athletes as well. Well, I do that on with, with I, I try to do that with everything in my life, right? I'm a martial artist, I'm a businessman, I'm a father, I'm a husband, and I'm always trying to not be stuck in my ways of the past. I always want to look forward to the future. And if you want to look forward to the future, you need to see what's happening now and what you could take from the new tools that are coming out to be able to accelerate you so you're not left behind. Because if you get stuck in those old ways, well then I'm still gonna be using a a, a flip phone and thinking that's how sure. I'm gonna call people. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out that old atlas. And I'm yeah. like, okay, how do I get that way? Right. So people are like, you guys know. Yeah, oh, I know. Right? Like, yeah. like, like, what the fuck is an atlas? Like, well, it's right. a Thomas guide. Right. Well, why am I asking Thomas for a guide? You know? Right, so, right. But you have to, you have to learn the new things with what's coming out. And that's what I think being a martial artist is. And, you know, one of the things I preach to my athletes and even the people that I work mentorships with is that you need to understand what it takes to be a champion. And that is a mentality, it's an approach. It doesn't mean because you are a champion. That's not the different thing. The mentality of what it means to be a champion. You have to be always learning and you always have to be a student. A hundred percent. Do you feel that there was a switch for you like along your journey that, that obviously you learn, we all do getting, you know, I say we age with like fine wine. We, we get better <laughs> as we go, you know, but do you think like your experience, obviously going, did you, you see things, did you like watch things or see things and go, yeah, that's not good. This is good. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, build that you, know, for you know, I think for me, um, there were a lot of things that I did wrong in my career because it was, it was in an era where it was a lot of trial and error, right? There was no mentorship. There was no leadership. What, yeah. When we were training, it was the guys that I was training with. It was like, Hey, let's, think we think this is how it gets you ready for a fight so we fought every day right yeah. and now it's like you know and a lot of the guys be, did very well and i did i did decently well too but that was without structure and so sure. now my my coaching way is that i want to teach them the ways of not doing it the way we did it but sure. the 100 that actually work and allow myself to kind of live through them in a way for the things that i wish i would have had um, and I yeah. want them to li be able to experience it through that. So therefore, that's why I'm so passionate <clears throat> about coaching, because it gives me a chance to redo it again through through them. And that's uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, for sure. And and the younger athletes need people like you. 
to do that because there's so much out there. Obviously, we know the YouTube and and with all the social media platforms, and there's so much information that's a nonstop. So they need someone that's been around it, understands it's made bad choices and good choices, and you figured it mm-hmm. out. You, and you've got it all in a basket, and you picked out what works. And now you're going to lead a next generation. It's like you're passing the torch, you know. And and so that's awesome, dude. Like good on you, man, because. It's hard. I love coaching. So it's, it's like a big passion of mine too. Like I love to coach people because I want them to be better. I want them to be successful in life. Um, well, I tell my guys, I say, listen, you know, I'm a coach that is not going to expect anything of you <laughs> that I do not expect of myself on a daily basis. hundred percent. And yeah. now that is also understand that is me setting the bar very high because I have an extremely high expectations of myself in that environment. Sure. Yeah, and definitely. If you were going to be in that environment, I'm going to ask of you the same thing I'll do. And if you don't think that I will do it, I'll get on that fucking mat and I will show you that this is exactly what I'm looking for. But I, and I think through the way that I coach and through the way I've been competing for all my years, people see it and they're like, okay, this is exactly how coach does it. Because when I'm getting ready for things, I lead by example. I'm like, look, at, look, I don't, and then I'm not doing it as in like, Hey, follow me. I'm like, Hey, if you're in my way, I am not letting anything slow me down. Because I have a goal and then this is the way I'm going to perceive it and or pursue it. Sure. And then it was cool because now these guys get it and they want to reach that same level of go, 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 go. Nothing's going to stop me and make an excuse because I want to go out and party. It's like there's a goal and I'm doing everything I can to give myself the best opportunity to be in a position for success. Yeah, that's um, in like... Y- so you, you set like building blocks, guys like you set building blocks for the guys of the future. So for you to, to train them and coach them that way, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's a, I mean, that's the future of, of how it should be in honesty, man. Let me tell you, I got a couple kids right now that have started with no experience, no wrestling, no background in sports. Well, I can't, I take it one, one kid played baseball, but he, you know, he's a, he's a little dude. And he's a 125 pounder. I mean, that's not going to get you far in baseball, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> um, and I know that because that's why I started playing baseball and I wanted to play ball. And that was my thing in high school. And they were like, listen, like you're four foot 11, you know, you're not, you're, it's you're, not funny, you're, but I know what you mean. Like, <laughs> it, it's, you know, and I'm like, you know, I played first base and pitcher and that is not the spots for a left-handed short guy, <laughs> you know? So anyways, um, so I got a couple of kids right now and they, coming up through the system this way, they do not know what it means. They don't know what it means to not believe in yourself. Sure. Right. They don't, they, and, and it's not even that I, that it means not to believe in yourself because that can be very broad. They don't know what it means to break because somebody puts extra pressure on you. Right. Because that's where a lot of people fall short, myself included. I wanted to be seen as something. That's why I, I put on false uh, personas growing up earlier in my life. That's also why when push came to shove, I would fall short because it wasn't a genuine version of myself. But these guys have learned from the beginning, go after it, no matter who's in front of you. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've got these two kids, man. It's, I got a couple more than that, but I mean, I've got a, I've got a kid that's been with me since he was 16. He's 20 years old now. He's only he's four and oh, as a, as an amateur. It's not, you know, not a big career, but he is running through black belts on the mat. Wow, he is running. Nice. I mean, he, he is now at four fights in. He is a two time state champion uh, here in California. Wow. Um, Good with, for him, man. That's awesome. He, in, his, in his championship title fights, his last two, he hasn't made, made it out of the first 90 seconds. Wow. Wow. Um, Relentless. <laughs> Relentless. And you know what? Here's the thing he's not even aggressive. He's technical. Just so, is he just, just oh, technical? Oh, my God. He's, he's unbelievably technical. Um, he's, so, he doesn't know what it means to break. And earlier when he was first starting with me, he would break every day in the gym. And I think we've been able to round that out. And now he doesn't even like, he can't even comprehend what it means to break. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. But that's a testament to you too, as like you, you rounded him to be like that. You encouraged him and led him to be, it, you gave him great mentorship to be where he's at now. You know, you look at it and you're like, Hey, you know. You can, the sky's the limit then, you know, cause the, the, the you've built that you helped him and saw in him to build that foundation. And now, you know, 20 years old, I mean, you know, be, being in it for a very long time, it's like, Hey man, and being technical, 
Um, and I don't know, <laughs> you, you know, you've been around this a long time, but a lot of, a lot of things weren't as technical in years past as they are no. maybe now, you know what I mean? No, no. There's like a- now, now the technique is so, it's so evolved. And, and <clears> I think that that's, what's so important. You have to, te- you know, you have to teach people nowadays how to learn. You have to teach them how to be a student because just showing up isn't enough. Right. They have sure. to learn. They have to want to learn how to learn. If that makes sense. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. Coon, what you know, were you going to say? I, I was yeah. just going to say that. And that like the, the, as far as jujitsu goes, the skill between rank is a lot shorter than it used to be. Like a purple belt and a black belt. When we started, I started in 2004 was like this, right? And now you got guys like Colabate from Atos competing with black belts and beating them. Like right. it's, it's crazy. These so young kids to bring, to bring Cola into the place. So, so my kid and Cole training. Him, okay. Right? Oh, nice. And, nice. And they, they, they go head to head. Yeah. Right. So like, I'm like, there's these two, my kid just got his purple belt. And to be honest, I was a little, I, he was a blue belt at the same time as Cole about Okay. And Cole got his purple belt. I was like, fine. My kid's getting his purple belt too. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you know, because they're both here in California. They're like yeah. 20 miles away from each other. They both, like my kid went to go train at AOJ for some more experience. Okay. Nice. And, and that, here's the thing about me as a coach. I don't care if you get extra work other places, if it's in pursuit of learning. Right. Just know where your home's at know yeah, and home. know, right. know what your reason for going there is. You know, don't let the yeah. culture of wherever you're going pull you away from where your home is. I, I think the pursuit of information and the pursuit of knowledge is absolutely the most important thing wherever you're getting it from. Just know where your home is. And that's where people get jaded, right? They forget and then they burn bridges and then they're like, oh, well, the grass is on the other side. And it doesn't work that way. Just keep studying. Yeah. Hey, man, I, I've said it exactly almost verbatim to what you said, Chad. It's like, go cross train, learn some stuff, bring it back to us. But you have to have a home and you have to have some loyalty. That's it. You know, and I, like, again, I've got another kid who started with me, the baseball player, real little guy, small, walked around like 125 pounds. Um, he became the first three time state champion here in California ever um, at 125 pounds. He went seven and zero as an amateur. He was the first kid that I ever took pro, and now he's 4-0 as a pro, and we just signed uh, him today with LFA on an exclusive contract. Oh, man, that's awesome. You know I mean? nice. so, so, like, that stuff's exciting because they, these kids only know go, 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 and I just want to be competitive. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And then I've got, like I said, this kid who is 20 years old. I mean, 20 years old, I can't do shit to him. <laughs> but that's what you want right at least that's how i always hear so and a side thing and a lot of our listeners uh, know this so chad coon is my coach so i'm a white belt <laughs> i'm a three-stripe white belt at i'm 44 i'll be 45 in, in may but i love bjj so <laughs> and i have a i have other martial arts background and throughout my life not that that matters because bjj is the king of all so <laughs> you heard it here first, everybody. <laughs> but we um, we talk about that. You know, like the goal is as a coach, isn't it? You you want your students to be better than you because you you give them so much, but you still want them. You want so much success for them. Yeah, you think so, but you know, it depends on the coach. A lot of coaches still have their own ego, and they yeah. want it to be about them. And you know, for me, when I stepped away from fighting, I knew that it was no longer about me. And that's why I stepped out. Like when my, when my son was born, I was like, okay, it's no longer time for me to be selfish. Now, when I bring the guys on the mats, I tell them like, guys, look, there's an expectation. If you're on this mat, I'm not holding your fucking hand. I'm not your babysitter. There, there, there's an expectation when you walk in that door (laughs) to start at this time. And if you come in late, that's not acceptable. If you come in like not ready to train, that's not acceptable. I expect of every single one of you, what I expect of guys like, that I, that I, that I train, you know, at the highest level. Right. And if you yeah. are not willing to meet that level, this is not the room for you. It's that simple. I think that's good because you set a precedent, you know, and people that come to train and, and you, sh- you should come wanting something to better yourself. So you should want to do that. When you walk through the door, you shouldn't be like, Hey, I'm just coming to hang out. You should say I'm coming <laughs> in here to be better. You know? Well, let's be honest though. Let's be honest. How many people want things in life, but then when it actually takes pursuit of that, 
And then when the trials and tribulations happen, that it's no longer the thing they want, at least right. not enough to go past not, those trials. Yeah, absolutely a lot. Yeah. And, and that's where the issue lies, yeah. is that most people don't know that they don't <laughs> want it enough. Yeah. Because they're surrounded by people who are okay with giving that enough. Right. And, you know, fighting is serious. It, oh, when it comes to sure. fighting, it, it is serious. And you could, this, this, is, this, is, this is my theory. You could train as hard as you possibly can. You could do all the extra work. You could do everything in your power. That doesn't guarantee anything. All that's going to do is put you in a position of a possible better situation than your opponent. That's it. But if you don't do those things, you're allowing yourself to be less than that. And in a dangerous sport, that is, uh, that, that, that's a risk I'm yeah. not willing to take. Yeah, especially in the, in the fight game. It, 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 you know, cage or even, you know, now that, um, what combat jujitsu seems to be really getting some steam. I know it's been around for a long time, but it seems to be getting out there. And then even just straight, like if you went to an IBJJF tournament or something like that, like if you're not preparing yourself like that in the, in the way that you're saying it, Chad, a hundred percent, like, <laughs> like stop wasting your time, then find something else to be just okay with, because at that point you're telling yourself you're okay to be just okay. You, yeah, you and, don't, and here's the thing, be honest, be, yeah, honest, with be honest with yourself. Yep. You could, you could lie to everybody. You can lie to everybody, but there's one person you can't lie to. And it's your biggest critic you will ever face <laughs> in your entire life. Every day. Every look in day. the look in the mirror, man, and that's it. That's, that's it. they're yeah. either gonna that person that you're looking at is either gonna make you succeed or make you fail. You know, we have these talks with my with my team every day at practice. Every day at practice. Nice. It's not even like a maybe. It's, this is every day, and I can guarantee you, if you selected any one of my fighters, competitors, even students, and you'll say, "What is the biggest weapon that you guys train?" and they will all say the mind. Yes, hundred percent. Yep. So Chad Kuhn and I. That's one of the you know that's. I think it's probably one of the things why we ended up starting a podcast because that's we hit it off so much and it was about like defining a mind for people and getting as much Brazilian jiu-jitsu information out and to make people understand like if you're going to do it, then do it. Don't just do it because you hear about it. You may may or may not like it because Chad Kuhn, what did we say before? I mean, what was I can always forget the phrase or what we were saying. What? Um Which BJJ one? is Oh, is it for everyone? Oh, that one. That yeah. one? Like, yeah. B, yeah. Is it or BJJ is for everyone, but everyone isn't for BJJ. Like that kind of deal, because it is for everybody. It can be for everybody, but is everybody for it? Because, you know, I mean, Chad, Chad George, you know this, like it's, it's a, as your nickname, it's a savage. It is a savage sport. <laughs> but you know what? Here's the thing about jiu-jitsu. This is what jiu-jitsu teaches us. It teaches us that it's okay to lose, figure out how you lost, face it, and go again. Go again and it yeah. doesn't matter how many times you lose as long as you keep going. And right, and that's kind of the, the, the correlation that it connects to life. You can keep failing over and over and over again, but you have not failed. There's a difference in failing and failure. Sure. There's a completely right. different thing. And that's what Jiu-Jitsu teaches us. Because every belt in Jiu-Jitsu, from white to blue to purple to brown to black, you're constantly going to fail as you're growing. Because the challenges get greater as you go on in the journey. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to fail. But we need to understand the difference between failing and failure. And that's what Jiu-Jitsu teaches us. Did you have someone introduce you to BJJ? Or did you see Yeah, so... I mean, kind of. So what happened was, is that when I was in college, um, I, I went to art and film school. And so that's actually my background. I, I was an artist professionally for a nice. long time. That's awesome. And, um, you know, I need, I started getting wrapped up in the, the studio bad habits, smoking cigarettes, doing cocaine, partying and all that stuff. Sure. And I needed now I needed to, I knew I was like, this is, this is ridiculous. Like I never did any of this stuff my entire life and I need to get back in shape. So I, uh, I started looking for a uh, wrestling school and there, this is when, um, I don't think you guys remember when the colleges pulled all the funding from the wrestling program. From the oh, wrestling yeah. program, yeah. And so I couldn't find anything. A buddy that I worked on a project, <clears> with, he was like, hey, why don't you try uh, jiu-jitsu like wrestling? And I was like, nah, I've seen that <laughs> stuff. I'm like, I'm good. I just, no real desire. 
And he goes, okay, well, you know, if, if you want, it, it's open. I go on these days. I said, okay. I couldn't find a school. So I said, you know what? I reached out to him. I said, let's give it a try. So I went into this uh, Taekwondo school and they had a no geek class. You know, it was like one class a week. And I met this guy, his name is Musa Tolliver, who is a, a, a guy that was training there. Musa, the reason why I bring the name up is because he's actually a good friend of mine now. Nice. And awesome. um, I went there and he was like, holy shit, you're a wrestler. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And he goes, man, I've been training here for a year and I've never had a guy to wrestle with. And I was like, well, let's wrestle. You know, so then I've, I've now I found a wrestling buddy <laughs> and they showed me a guillotine that day. And I was like, how fucking cool is this? I get to wrestle and choke people. <laughs> Dude, oh, right. And um, and so the jitsu instructor was actually on vacation or something. He wasn't even there. So we were just kind of training. I was like, this is cool. And then um, eventually uh, a couple, about a, I, I want to say like two months later, I started training like maybe twice a week. And they were like, hey, do you uh, want to try the MMA classes? And then same thing. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like, this is, I've seen that UFC stuff and I'm good. Just give it a try. So I, I gave it a try. And I was in the same, same thing, right? It popped in my head. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. I get to punch people. I get to choke people. And I get to wrestle. And I don't and, get in uh, trouble for it? Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, like, this is crazy. And, um, and so the guy that uh, was teaching the jiu-jitsu classes, his name is Sean Choi. Uh, oddly enough, and this is a very rare story. He's still my professor today. Oh, wow. Um, that is so awesome. I, I, I became years later, Sean, uh, I was his first black belt. I was Sean's first black belt. Um, he became a, a very, very big part of my, my, my journey and my, my life. And, um, it was a lot of tough love. He beat the fuck out of me. Um, <laughs> uh, and you know what though? He grounded all, he grounded and grinded off my ego that I had. And, um, you know, he, he really did show me the, the value of what jiu-jitsu was, and it wasn't about the belts. And, um, you know, I, I credit a lot of stuff to him because even when I stepped – so I actually stepped away from jiu-jitsu before – I mean, from MMA before I retired. And when I – it was in 2015. I stepped away. I just lost the love for it. I did. And um, I started really having an, an, a, an infatuation and with jiu-jitsu. And when I stepped away from it, I told Sean, I said, hey, um, I really want to do this jiu-jitsu thing to a different level. Like, I want to I I obsess on it the way I did MMA. And nice. he said, let's do okay. it. And so we, him and I just started dissecting, like the Don and her guys. We yeah. started dissecting the Den Planet guys. And I said, you know what? I want to go comp- – I want to be competitive against these guys the way I was against the MMA guys. And so we started studying, and I started competing, like, almost every weekend in jiu-jitsu. Okay. And um, then next thing you know, it I was doing Metamorris, and then it was fight to win, and then uh, I had the opportunity for combat jitsu, and then I became the first combat jitsu world champion. So I mean, like Sean, my jitsu professor, through the beginning of all this, became the 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 main reason why, in, like most of this stuff in my career is possible, and um, I, I dedicate a lot of my my passion for jitsu to him. That's I mean, it's a it's amazing and awesome all at the same time because. It goes back to what you talked about earlier, like loyalty and a home, like, like you stayed with him. It, 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 that's your home. And he was hard on you, but he was hard on you to make you grow. And he stuck <clears> by <throat> your side all the time. You know what I mean? He was also hard on me because he was an asshole. Bec- <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to say that. I don't know the guy, so I can't say that. <laughs> you going to compete at, uh, in BJJ anymore? You know, I want to listen. That, that's my goal. Obviously, with COVID, it's made things yeah, really tough. Yeah, sure, uh, and, for sure. You know, and and you know, it's been on my. You know, I, I write down my goals and all this stuff all the time. And competing is something I really love and I want to do. But I've got a room of forty athletes that I'm responsible for. Yeah. You know, like I've got I've got guys <clears> competing <throat> in the UFC, Bellator, all over the world. And you know, um, as much as I want to compete, I, I do believe I will again, and I do believe it's on my schedule. But every time I want to, I, I got to <laughs> take off. And I, I you know, it's, I've, ha- I've had my time. Sure. And now for me, competing is about getting new data so I can give to them. And so <clears throat> I want to study the new material that's out there so I can give it to them in a manner that it'll be relevant for them to be able to use in their careers. Sure, sure. That yeah. makes sense. I mean, that's, that's what you do as a coach. I mean, you're going to make, when you become, 
people have talked to me before, younger people have talked about being in coaching or they want to be coaches and, and be into that world and stuff like that. And I said, realize you're going to make a sacrifice. You're going to make a sacrifice of giving up maybe some things that you want to do or, but it doesn't mean you can't do them, but right now you're not going to be able to, if you want to be the coach that those athletes are going to need you to be, you know? Yeah. And you know, and that's the, that's actually a great thing to say, because I, I say this all the time that you have to become what they need. Yeah. hundred percent. you do not, you do not have those tools yet in the beginning. You do not, you have to develop those tools. And today <laughs> I'm a way better coach than I, I ever was in the beginning. In fact, I'm a better coach today than I was yesterday because I'm constantly becoming the version that these guys need as they grow. But in order for that to happen, I have to grow as well. So sure. I have to I have to drink my own juice per se. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because if we're not growing, we're not getting better. You know, That's you're just it. not. If you want to you know, stay stagnant, I, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. You're good. I'm sorry, sorry. I wasn't saying like you know when I got obsessed with jujitsu, you know, I was winning all these tournaments, and I told I told the professor, I said, "Hey, Sean, like." Like, let's go after these big leg lockers. Like, I want to I wanna compete against these guys. I believe, and we studied them. We're like, listen, like, I understand what they're doing. So I started leg locking everybody. Boom, 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 leg locking everybody. And then Eddie Cummings was like the man when EDI and all those things oh, first yeah. started. Eddie yeah. Cummings was, 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 the, was the godfather of leg locks, right? Yeah. I mean, remember, he was just killing everybody in EDI. Yeah. And so we started studying him. And uh, my, first, my first big event as a black belt. Or no, I'm sorry. Was I a black belt? I think I was a black belt. I think I was. And anyways, I went out there and I and I beat the first guy who was like the most veteran EBI guy. He had he'd been on like seven EBI events, and I beat him. And then it was me and Eddie Cummings in the second round. And I was like, this is the match I want. Like I I want to prove that like I've studied this. I'm new to the scene, but watch what I can do. Thirty seven seconds later. I was already screaming to a heel hook Oof. and you know, but here's the thing. I look back at that. And so what did Sean and I do? We dissected the video. Why, why did that happen? Yeah. And so we got obsessive for the next couple of months on studying why it, it wasn't even, it was technical, but it was more paying attention to his understanding of the exchanges it wasn't even the technique yeah. it was his in integration of i'm gonna call it a language of the leg lock sure yeah. and so i started so i started studying the language and then i had an opportunity i was like okay now i need to try this again i had an opportunity to go to uh new jersey to go uh compete against one of eddie cummings main training partners and students uh his name's frank rosenthal and frank's for another henzo gracie black belt amazing, amazing competitor. And I said, you know what? They think that I'm going to wrestle and I, I, I don't even care about the results. I'm going to go leg locks with this guy for the entire match. And I, because I, I wanted to see what happened. That's what exactly what I did. Him and I went after each other for 10 minutes. I ended up losing in overtime, but my goal was to prove that I understand the language. And that's the way I dissect everything now. I want to understand, you understand the way the, yeah. the, 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 the argument can be done in each position and each attack. It's a lot like my questions that I ask in class, isn't it, Chad? Kuhn? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I want to understand why this is not what if. I don't ask the, hey, well, what if you do this? And what if this happens? Because I know I'm too young in my journey to know that. Jiu-Jitsu brings too many what ifs. So my you ready, question: you ready, you ready for this? You know the best questions that you can ask in the white belt? None. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. See, I've, I've said none. Yes. <laughs> Which it's a it's an ongoing joke. I am, and everyone at our gym listens to the show so they know this i'm probably one of the only guys that ask questions <laughs> like pretty openly not that no one else wants to but i am a white belt and i'm always like well okay do you need your hand right here <laughs> or <laughs> right here? and it's like well yeah, <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> hey, chad will just be like we're gonna roll at the end and then i'll just make you shush then which doesn't doesn't take too long <laughs> which is good not, not a, that's okay. Just what it is. Right. Yep. <laughs> All right, man. So how about this gi or no gi? Oh, we know the answer to that. <laughs> oh, you, you think so? Well, maybe not. Maybe not anymore. <laughs> now, now that 
Go ahead. Jiu Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu, man. Yeah. Uh, like, like I, I'm, I'm an advocate of the gi and no gi. I make all my students train both. Both. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a competitor, no gi, because we're predominantly an MMA school. But I believe that the importance of the gi and no gi understanding are, are what <clears throat> makes it special. I was going to ask you if you make your fighters train in the gi. I, I don't, I don't force them to do anything. Okay. Um, but if they're going to get belted, they have to put the gi on. Like okay. I, that's, I, oh, I've nice. lost, okay. I, I've taken on a lot. Like there's a lot of things that I've got. I used to be very traditional in many ways. And then I've gotten a lot more lax because I've evolved with what I think is my interpretation of jiu-jitsu. Right. And I'm, I'm not a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy anymore. I, I, I guess you could say I'm more of an American jiu-jitsu guy. But then if you think about it, remove the, uh, the, the, the location, right. I'm just, a, I'm just a jiu -jitsu jiu -jitsu. guy now. Yeah. And, and now I can create my own understanding of it and what I think is, is necessary. And, um, I, I think it's all important. I don't make anybody, uh, get in the gi, but if you want to get belted, the the belt ties your gi on, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, I, I don't understand what it makes like, Oh, I'm going to do a no, I'm a no gi brown belt. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like yeah. a no gi brown belt. Like, uh, yeah, I, I, okay. But, Put a gi on. Like, I don't need you to be amazing in the gi. Put a gi on so I can at least put it around your belt or put it around your, your uh, yeah. I mean, this is jiu-jitsu. As much as I, I have my, my, my feelings and my opinions on the jiu-jitsu history and lineage. Sure, yeah. but, but I also pay my respect to where it came from. And, yeah. you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a jiu-jitsu black belt. So I put the gi on and I like to look good in a suit. So let me put my <laughs> gi on, and that's that's what the belt resembles, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. like put put the gi on, look good, and it's up to you after that what you want to do. Yeah, that's that's a great answer. I've I've asked people on the podcast before, other black belts, like if you had a guy that only did no gi, would you rank him? My answer is usually no. Like like you said, you got to put the gi on to get to get to rank. Yeah, and I don't need you to be good at it. Yeah, just, just do look. Jiu-jitsu is about doing things that make you uncomfortable. Right. And if he yeah. makes you uncomfortable, well, guess what? That's what you got to do. Yeah. yeah. Be okay being uncomfortable. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's it. It. You know, and, and don't want to be common. Don't want, you know, want to be uncommon among, un amongst uncommon people. And that's yeah, but kinda, I think that, you know, that, that comes down to your environment, right? Like, oh, it does. It does for you sure. Know, if you, if you are surrounded by people that are common, or if you're surrounded by people <laughs> that are driven by social media, if you're surrounded by people that are driven by status, you know, that's what you're going to find yourself in, wanting to compete against. And hundred yeah, percent when you're in an environment of people that are, are pursuing excellence, your environment in your environment is pursuing success. Your ways of approaching all that is going to be different. A hundred percent. Now, yeah, you're, you're spot on, especially no matter what you're doing, it's always going to be different in all aspects of life, work, um, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, with children, having kids, you know, your one kid's going to be, you know, we talked earlier, I have three kids when all three of my kids are, you know, we have the same set of rules. They know them, but they are all kind of raised differently, you know, they, a little bit differently, you know, because that's, that's how my wife and I have chose to do it. That's just what we're doing. But right. You know, that's how you have to approach everything in life, you know, doing it that way. So, yeah, Listen, right. how you do anything, <laughs> how you do anything is how you do everything. And, you know, if you're if you're going to do everything half ass, you're only going to get half ass results in anything you do. 100 percent. Yeah, definitely. What's your favorite uh, platform for jujitsu? I'm just going to call it jujitsu. It's just. Like, like rules, rules, uh, rules. I left that part out. See, this is why we have two of us on this. So, <laughs> so here, that, that's a kind of a, a tough question for me because I tell everybody the same thing. Look, if you want to get good at jiu-jitsu, the rule set does not matter. You need to compete as much as possible and you need to know as much of the different rules as possible. The ones you don't like, you need to find a way to compete into it to where you like it. Because that's the only way you can truly understand this stuff. Not just because it fits in your rule set. And not just because it fits in your way of liking it. That'd be the difference of like, oh, I only train the gi. Right. Or oh, I only train no gi. Right? I, don't, I, I, I think it's too broad of a question. 
Coach Kuhn, see, this is that he this is his same answer. This is the same yeah. answer. That's the same thing. Every time I if I ask anyone that question, <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. But like that's that. what that's 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 unfortunately where we're at. Like Chad was saying, it's gee or are you a gee or no gee guy? Sure. We how many people do we see only want to do certain rule sets? Uh, I don't want to do IBGJF because I don't like the points. Uh, I want submission only. I want longer time limits. Jujitsu, right? Just I will say, I will say, I don't personally, and I love jujitsu. I don't like the like 20 minute matches. Like, you know, no gi, 20 minutes, sweaty, not much is going to happen at the end. I don't know. It's, it's tough. But look, at the end of the day, if it's a rule set that you're entered in the engagement of rules, well, then it is what it is. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. You can't complain. If you're, if you're like, oh my God, but if this was EBI, I would have been like, but you, but it wasn't. But it wasn't. Sure, right? sure. Yeah. Right. Oh, if, if this would have had overtime, it, but it wasn't. Right? right. You signed up for that rule set. Yeah. And if you sign up for that rule set, you cannot complain that it didn't match the rules of other events, you know? And the, I will say this, though, that, and this is, this is going to sound partial, but, you know, sport jiu-jitsu in general has gotten away <laughs> from being competitive. People don't want to compete. They want to win. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm a wrestler. And from my background of wrestling, God help your soul if you did not try to win a match in wrestling. Right. You know, you, can, you can't win a match just by running away. <laughs> and now, you know, you've seen all those videos where guys are like dropping guard together for, for six minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, how is that a practical use of self-defense? Jiu-jitsu was designed as a self-defense system. Yeah. And you guys are going to sit here and pull guard on each other for six minutes. And whoever got closer is going to be deemed world champion. Right. Like, that's insanity. That's so. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that be, no, so that's my, my, my quarrel with sport jiu-jitsu now is like, I do feel like I have a tournament that I run called this uh, California submission series. And you're not allowed to pull guard. You're not, you know, because yeah. oh, wow. I, okay. don't think, I, I don't think now it's a sub only tournament, but you're not allowed to pull guard. Now we do go in like the way our format goes is a little bit different. We go, it's a uh, sub only. And then what happens is it was overtime is first point wins. You're not yeah. allowed to pull guard. So first uh, point okay. wins. So you go two minutes for first point wins. Um, if nothing happens, then we go to EBI overtime. You actually have to earn the, the position. Yeah. Yes. Instead of it just going, I can run for the length of the match and then get to a position that I didn't earn. No, sure. I'm actually at least going to force you to earn it for two minutes. Stop a takedown for two minutes. Then at least you've shown that you've earned the ability for that position. That's pretty cool. And I like that. We've had really good success with that tournament. And I mean, I think the last one we event. Uh, we ran we ran a hundred matches. Wow. We had two wow. we had we had two of two matches go to EBI. Wow. wow. So everyone knew. I mean when they came in they <clears throat> they attacked basically like right from well, the get go and so when I when I hold a tournament I do a full rules meeting with every weight class and I explain the expectations and what what the what the what the engagement sure. and so I mean think about this if if in, in two minutes if you don't get a takedown, like you're, you're going to give him a bad position. Yeah. So go get the fucking takedown. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you battling this, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no. I was going to say, uh, when you came up, I mean, did you like sit down and maybe with Sean or something and, and diagnose like what you guys were going to come up with? Um, not really. I, I put, you know, I've been competing for so long. I sure. figured I was like, okay, I love, I love the sub only format. Like for me, the ADCC rule format is like the best in the, in, in the sports, in um, grappling sports, mm-hmm. because it's the first half is sub only. And if you don't catch it sub only, it goes to points. Yeah. yeah. Fair. Fair. You know, like uh, you can't pull guard in, in the, in the points version. And if you do, it's a point goes to the other side. You are giving up a point. Fair. I love it. You and- know, and I, it, that, that is competition. You have to compete to earn those positions. Hundred yeah. percent. And this like year's old, yeah, go ahead, Chad. You're good. I, said, I don't know if Chad Chad, you remember the old uh was it the Hickson Cup? You remember those matches? Mm-hmm. Same thing. If you pulled guard, you got a negative point, I believe. Yeah, so think about that. Where it started. You were, could you imagine pulling guard in the beginning? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So That's- it's, you got to wrestle, man. And like, you know, now, now that the Barambolo game has become so apparent and all this stuff, it's like, could you imagine pulling guard in a street fight? <laughs> that yeah i mean no <laughs> if i've been i'm no weird near of like you uh chad and, and fighting wise but i've been in fights growing up a lot or i was not a good young person <laughs> i'll just say um but yeah i mean i think back now and go if i ever saw anybody do that i'd be like what the heck are you doing <laughs> like what's going on i mean here? that's the reality like you have black belts that can't wrestle sure you know what i mean so that is such a false representation of what you are capable of you know i have guys now that i've seen you know that 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 are calling themselves jiu-jitsu instructors that are literally pulling guard and being upset the guys didn't engage in their guard Mm. and i'm like are you kidding me (laughs) like like i can't even wrap my head around that (laughs) I, I mean, it's, I get it because you, and you can't, you got to be well-rounded. And obviously if you've been around for a long time and you've done this for a long time, because it's not a, you're not a black belt overnight, you know, for anyone out there that's wanting to try some, this, some, <laughs> some, some, some <laughs> schools you are. Yes. We, <laughs> we've had that discussion many times and I'm always like, wait a minute. I don't understand how that person, like I'll ask coach Kuhn and I'm like, wait, how's that happen? And he's like, well, every, every place is different. That's a, that's, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Cause I'm, you know, yeah, because guys want to make people feel special. I get that, but they also don't want to lose them. Mm-hmm. So they want that constant paycheck coming in. They want that yeah. constant student. So they want to, they want to reward them for X amount of classes that's been on paper. And I, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I don't you know, either. like I, I, I will hold you back if I think you're deserving because I don't want it to be about the belt. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I really want it to be about the journey. And, <laughs> you know, if you're one of my blue belts, I'm confident that you can go to any school in the world and be competitive with their blue belts and potentially even their purple belts and up. I want people to be upset that you are only a blue belt. I yeah. never want anybody to look at you and go, oh, you're a blue belt. Oh, hmm. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I never want. That. You know, that's just not. I want. I want you to be proud of where you come from and 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 where your skill level's at. And that's kind of like when I walked in and started doing jujitsu. I had a. I have always had a passion in my life to try it. So when I did made the decision to just walk in the gym and do it, um, that was my attitude from the get go. And I tell people always ask me, they're like, "Well, why would you do this?" You know, people in my family, they're like, "You know, why would you go?" wrestle around with guys sweaty in your face. Even my wife still this day, she's like, it still baffles me that you do this, but she knows what type of person I am too. God bless her that she married me. So, um, (laughs) but, uh, I'm like, look, you don't, don't do this because you're trying to get, you need to do this to find out who you are. That's why I did it. Like I wanted to know how good I could be at anything. I didn't care about anything else. Yes. It's awesome. Like when I got my stripes on my white belt, I was elated because I was like, man, it is hard. It's very hard to do this. But at the same time, like I'm going to put my head down and grind. Like I will just grind. I will do whatever it takes. Like it's just who I am. But I try to encourage people. Like I'm like, this is what you need to do if you're going to do this. If you're going to enter, enter into a grappling world, jujitsu, wrestling, anything, you got to be prepared, prepare yourself to just grind, just do it. And I know that it kind of sounds dumb because people are like, well, don't, it's not about the grind. It's about the journey, but that's what I mean. Like it's about your journey and your ability to be there. And, and obviously <clears throat> then surround yourself with good people because you end up with a family that you didn't know you were going to end up having. <laughs> I mean, you- think about that. You're, you're in your forties and all of a sudden you found something that you have not had. That gives you a fulfillment that was never there your entire life. You know, you're let's essentially halfway through your life. And now exactly. all of a sudden found something that's probably more powerful than anything you've ever come across. Yep. Yeah. You know what and, I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's special. It's, it's so awesome that you say it that way, because that's exactly how I feel. You know, people look at me sometimes crazy and, you know, but people that do this understand it. It is the greatest yeah, thing. I know. Exactly. <laughs> right. 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 Exactly. It's the greatest thing I've ever found. Like I am more happier now in my forties than I've ever been doing this. Like, I love it. It's just, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's so good. You know, the people that are looking at you funky and the guys that are saying things, that's just a reflection of themselves. That has nothing to do with you. 
Yeah. Right on. They're probably, sitting, sure. they're probably sitting on the couch when they're telling you that. Right. That's it. <laughs> Upset because they're not doing something else themselves. So. Yeah. As they're eating, you know, whatever God knows, uh, food for the, the 20th day in a row. <laughs> right. Exactly. Not, but not getting out and going, Hey, that's, let's go to a run or doing anything. They're not doing anything. So anything, anything. It yeah. doesn't have to be fitness. It can be anything. It right? can be anything. Yeah. You don't have to. I tell people all the time. I'm like, do something. That's a coach Coon And I talk about that. It's like, do something, do something. So <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I gotta, um, I gotta ask Chad about a match. Probably yeah. w- when I first heard your name a lot was mm-hmm. Bellator and the Von flu choke. Right. That's, I think when I first started hearing about you and I'm like, that was crazy that you had to tell the ref that the dude was out. <laughs> I just rewatched it today and he's like, no, he's not <laughs> like, yeah, that was mind. a crazy night. Right. You know, that was, uh, it was a great night for, uh, martial arts. You mm-hmm. know, it, it was a great night for obviously, you know, the exposure of my career. Right. Um, but it was also, you know, it was, it was a moment that I, I would hope that if the tables were turned, mm-hmm that somebody would have that same compassion for me. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. You not hitting so, that yeah. guy shows who you are. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know how many people wouldn't, wouldn't hit that, hit somebody. You know what I mean? Look, I, I believe that when the fight is over, the fight's over. I mm-hmm. want to get in there. And I, if, if, if God forbid both him and I can walk out of that thing unharmed. Yeah. We both have families to go to. Yeah. And, yep. you know, I, there's no point in doing more damage. I don't have any <laughs> will against it. In fact, Mark, him and I are good buddies now. Good. Yeah. Nice. I, I thought, yeah, we're good buddies, man. He's got a school in San Diego. We talk all the time. He's been on my podcast, you know, and we talked about this fight on my show. Nice. Awesome. awesome. You know, and it's, it's, it, it's, it's not about inflicting damage. This is a, is, is a sport of martial arts at the highest level. And, you know, actually what's funny about the story, though, the, the referee, his name's Mylon Ayers. Mm-hmm. Mylon, after that fight, became a student of mine. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Did he ask you to teach him that move right away? Was he- <laughs> you know, it was, it was one of those jokes. He was like, I don't know if I should bring my head in there. Would it be weird? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I don't think anybody's going to notice you. And, of course, everyone's like, you're the rap. You're the rap. <laughs> Right. But no, um, you know, he was actually a blue belt in jiu-jitsu before he came to me. And oh, nice. to, his, to his credit, the Vaughn flu is a very sneaky choke, mm-hmm. especially the way that I do it. I don't do it in a standard way that most people are accustomed to where you just trap the head and it's a shoulder choke. I actually trapped the hands way earlier before it happened. And that was a, a series that I had trained that night for that opponent. Oh, wow. He okay. Fought one of my students before. Excuse me. And so we were drilling it and drilling it and drilling it. And even people backstage were like, that guy's drilling that stupid shit. <laughs> and, uh, and then it ended up being, you know, the, how the fight ended. And the way I do it, people, I catch people in it all the time. All the time. And they always say the same thing. And that was so weird. Like, I catch black belts all the time. They'll go, man, my hand was just stuck. And I go, yeah, that's so weird. Like, I don't know. I don't know your hand was weird. Like, oh. You know, and it's like, of course it was stuck. Of course, it was stuck. That was that. I set That's that up point. an hour ago. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, an hour ago. The setup. The yeah, setup and then the, the cocker. <laughs> so, you know, and then the setup happens way before the choke. And that's so I understand why it was hard to, um, to, under, to see. To see, yeah. 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 I was kind of, so I don't know how much you know about, or, you know, Midwest guys. So I'm a black belt under James Klingerman. He's out of Indiana. And uh, he actually has a Von Flew instructional series. So I was kind of hip to what was happening. You know what I mean? So I know it's not, you don't see it too much. No, not in, yeah. in my opinion. You don't see it much done properly. Properly. Yeah. 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 That's sweet. Very cool. Bring out where, where, in, where, where in Indiana are you? Well, that's, I'm not, we're in Ohio. So my instructor, oh, okay. James, yeah, my instructor James is in Indiana. I think he's in Greenville. He's, I don't think yeah. it's too far oh, from, okay. uh, not too far from Indianapolis. Yeah, God, I, I don't I don't know any geography over there. I just know that I think I'm going to be in Hammond, Indiana um, in a couple weeks. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about Indiana either. I, I fought in Indiana once. We are in Evansville, Indiana. Evansville, yeah. yeah. I've heard that yeah, a bun- bun- bunch of people with, with six fingers and, uh, and no teeth. <laughs> no teeth. <laughs> Back in the day, right? <laughs> 
That's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Good stuff, man. That's awesome. Hey, let me ask you this, Chad. So do you feel there's a, at this point in your coaching career and mentor, you know, doing your mentorship and, and having all the athletes, do you feel there's a duty to, of yourself, a duty of yourself? You know, it kind of goes back. I guess, it, I guess you would kind of already answered this because <clears throat> being who you are and being the coach that you are, do you think there's a duty to the MMA world and BJJ or jujitsu and grappling in general for yourself? Say that again. Do you think there's, so do you feel there's a duty? Do you have a duty? Do you think you have a duty to BJJ or grappling or MMA now that you've been in it for so long? I think that the duty is leading this next generation to be the best versions of themselves. Nice. You know, um, you know, and I think that that's one of the things that my biggest ambition is is to help influence anybody that I come in contact with to better themselves with whatever it is that they're doing. And so whether it be in MMA or jiu-jitsu, your listeners, you guys, my wife, my son, um, I, I think that's what the duty is. And to take the tools that I've acquired over all these years and be able just to put it to some kind of good sure, and help one person, two people, as many as I can, and just let that be my, <laughs> I, be, I believe that's my duty. Nice. Yeah. yeah that's, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's yep. perfect. Definitely. For sure. Do you think, uh, do you think you would have stayed with, um, just doing jujitsu if you never went into competitive doing, comp doing MMA? Do you think that ever, do you ever sit back and go and oh, I, ever I, 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 I don't think so because in the beginning I, I didn't actually believe jiu-jitsu was worth anything i was like those guys are fucking karate guys you yeah. know like, like wearing like, their pajamas that's, what that's, that's what it was i was like i will whoop that pussy's ass like that's the way i thought back then and you know it's funny because i got into this for mma and i thought i was a fighter right like i was like i'm a badass i i go fight in a cage in front of crowds of thousands of people and it but in the end it was jiu-jitsu that led my life. Uh, Jiu-jitsu is what took me under its wing and showed me like, this is, this is the way to live life and nice. to approach tr challenges. And so in the, again, in the end, it was jujitsu that took me under and nice. allowed me to start living my life under my understanding of jiu sure. Yeah, Fighting just fighting led me to jiu-jitsu and jiu-jitsu held the torch. Nice. Nice. You think competitions make you different versus competing? 100, 100, absolutely. I think competition is 100% necessary in the journey. I don't think you need to be a great competitor because that's sure. got to be a fire. In the <clears throat> team, right? Many of us have other ambitions, but I think competing is so important because it forces you out of your comfort zone and to face the challenge of what's in front of you. That's all it yeah. is. Right. Because we have so many challenges in life and we just don't want to face them. You know, we'll take the easy route and doing a tournament, doing this. I, again, I said it, I, you don't need to be an amazing competitor, but don't go the other way because it seems too hard. Sure. And I think yeah. that's what the challenge of competing does. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. For sure. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and that, and that's kind of why I, we started so way back in the day, you know, when I started, we used to do this thing at the gym called match of the week. Right. And my instructor who was a blue belt when I started, um, started doing it because I was nervous competing. I didn't compete a lot, but when I did, I didn't wrestle. I did karate back in the day. Um, so he started by, Hey, Chad, you're up right now against this guy and we're all going to watch. And, and we didn't have big classes back then, but I just brought that back to our classes because some of these guys want to okay. compete. They want to compete and they could have just rolled for a six minute match, you know, while we're doing open rolling. Um, but when you set that timer and people are watching, it changes everything. Yep. That Absolutely. adrenaline. I had one guy had to go throw up in the bathroom. Like did, his adrenaline yeah. got so big <laughs> yeah. and yep. you try to, you try to match the pace of the other guy and, you know, competing is a skill, you know, learn, you have to learn how to do that. And it, let's be honest, like that is what life is. Yeah. Right. You are competing every day in life <coughs> to be successful in your skin. hundred percent. Right. Yep. And 
I don't care who you are. That's the way it is. From the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, you are competing against yourself. And so what that forces you to do is it creates some type of a challenge for you to rise to. And you can never unlive that, right? You can True. never unlive yeah. the fact that you went out there and did that. That is something you get to take for the rest of your life. Even these people that compete for the first time in MMA, I think it's so important because that is a moment that you get for the rest of your life. Now, here's the biggest thing. Not only is that a moment that you get to have for the rest of your life, that's a moment that you get to share with the elite of the elites that only you guys get to be a part of that secret club. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. That's huge. That's huge. It's, I know this is, this is opposite in terms of fighting, but I, so for me personally, <laughs> that's me doing this show. <laughs> I get to talk to guys, have an opportunity. Do you, you know, I don't get to go shoot hoops with, uh, you know, any professional basketball players or whatever, or play baseball with them. But I get to hang out with top of the line guys like you, Chad, like talk, just talk and hang out and talk about this kind of stuff. For me, I look at it the same way like that. It's like, it's a, it's a great opportunity and it's like, it's something you don't forget. I tell people all the time, like how you start a podcast. I'm like, well, it wasn't, I didn't think about this part of it (laughs) until I started doing it. And then I was like, man, I get to talk to guys that I like now watch and see and watch what they're doing when they do stuff. And I was like, you just don't get to do that in anything else. I mean, coach Kuhn and I have talked about it before. It's like, when do you obviously get to sit down and hang out with people that have done it, have been elite and fought at the type of top level or competed in, in any, any tournament or any kind of level of point system or no, no matter what it is. So uh, for that, I th- I even thank you. I thank you, man, because <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, I mean, hey, listen. Think about this. How about this? Let let let's let's reverse engineer that. That all came down because you built the fucking balls to sign up at that gym at the age that you're sure. at that most people says you shouldn't do. One hundred percent. All yeah. that happened because, because you decided to step out of your comfort zone. 100%. You know, I'm, I'm writing a book right now and actually I'm just about done with it. It's called uh, a champion's mindset. Oh, um, nice. So, so the book will be coming out. It'll be on Amazon. It'll be audio books. So it's going to have full distribution. It's a 16 chapter book talking about my story, but it's also a, a mental development book about those stories right there. Everything you're talking about and what it means to step out of your comfort <laughs> zone and learn that it's okay to have all kinds of shit happen in your life. But as long as you pay attention to the things that allow you to like go for it. Yep. And, 100%. you know, I applaud guys like you that decide to say, you know, I'm 40 years old. I'm going to sign up at a jiu-jitsu gym. Now you're doing a podcast. Now you're talking to guys like that's fucking incredible. So that is winning. Thanks, man. I appreciate that for sure. Because I question myself as every human being does. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm, as you said, I look in the mirror and I'm my own worst enemy. So, but, but I'm also a push forward person too. I'm like, look, I'm not sitting around and not doing anything. So yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, hey, when you're going to, obviously you'll drop when that book's coming out and stuff. So oh, for be, sure. yeah. yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Is that, so the the documentaries or stuff and stuff that you did did you did you want to do that because you had that background and you know doing audio and, and video and all no. that or oh, okay no so the first, so the first documentary occupation fighter um, that was when I met a uh, I was living next to a, a guy who was in between film projects he was an award winning documentary and a uh, documentarian from Germany and he had never met a real fighter before oh and wow. he thought I was okay. cool. <laughs> you know, and he, you know, like, he was like, "Man, you're a fighter." And then he looked me up, and he was like, "Oh my god, like he's actually a real fighter." <laughs> and he goes, I, "You know, I thought you know fighters were six foot ten, you know, guys that like just like bled out of their mouth for no reason, you know, like like that, sure. you know, the uh, the storyline guys that you see on the movies." And he was like, "Man, like you're down to earth, dude. We we drink we drink beers and whiskey together. Like this is weird." And so he was so enthralled by my story, he wanted to learn more. And uh, we filmed the, the movie Occupation Fighter about what it means to be a, 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 a pursuing athlete. And like that, that film, that film really um, was one of the first of its kind to show what it means to really pursue this, uh, this journey. And that's, that was on awesome. Netflix for a long time. Yep. Uh, if, if, if you've never seen it, it's still on Amazon. It's called Occupation Fighter. 
And then um, I was fortunate enough that one of my training partners, Carlos Cespedes, who uh, and his wife Anna, who, uh, they actually just had their uh, their first child yesterday. Their, awesome, their daughter was man. born. Very cool. And uh, so, congratulations to them. Yeah. They uh, Carlos has been a main training partner of, my, of mine for many years. In fact, he was my Jiu-Jitsu professor's second black belt. Wow. And awesome. He worked, Very cool. And he works in the film industry. And so he produces all those amazing reality TV shows like uh, Jersey Shore and um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things like that, you know, very, very high quality films. And, um, uh, and anyways, but his wife, on the other hand, is another documentary producer. And they really wanted to give homage to my, my career that I've done for so long. And they wanted to make a documentary out of me training for my very last fight. And uh, so that's where life of a fighter uh the journey came from and so now that one was finally released uh in august and now it's still going through the distribution uh, circuits where it, the, the marketing is still happening with that but it is available on tubi and fight tv yep. and that concludes the last 15 weeks of my uh, my training camp uh tidying up my entire 15 years of a career and you know it was injury after injury uh, years of just breakdown, body pain. And, you know, I didn't even know if me making this fight was going to be possible. And they captured such an incredible story, just like Andre did with the first film. And uh, I'm blessed to have so many amazing people around me that, that want to take part in the, in the story that I've been able to, uh, to create through this, uh, this journey. That's awesome, man. And it's such, it's, it is so good. And I think it's such an inspiration because again, it's going to extend that. It's going to extend the teachings to the next generation of people that want to do this and, and yeah. give them some tools that they're going to need that maybe they're not going, they wouldn't have had before they didn't um, invest properly. That's, that's put yeah. it that way. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody special. I'm really not. I'm just a guy who refused to give up. And yep. that's the way it's been my entire life. And if I have been able to do what I've been able to do, anybody can. You know, like I, I was not blessed with a silver spoon. I have had so many shortcomings. You know, my life has been like a, like a seesaw, you know, up, down, up, down, you know, and I've, I've cried more than most men probably should cry. And it's just, you know what, that's life. And the more we can accept that, we realize that my story is no different than the guy standing next to me. And that's why it's, it's so important for me to share all this with people because whatever success I've had is, is just because I didn't stop. That's all it is, is that I, I've taken my hits and just didn't quit. I, I kept moving forward and, you know, it doesn't matter how much I move forward in life. I'll always be there standing next to the people with my hand out saying, let's go, let's keep pushing. Right on. Yeah, yeah, and that, I think that I, I I watched the documentary the other day, and I think that's what it captured the most of is that you said you're just a, a, a normal guy that didn't give up, and you had every opportunity with injuries. And how many guys pulled out of that fight? Two, three, three, three. And you, I mean, it would have been easy to say, ah, let's just pack it up, right? I mean, but and you went out there and did it. So that kid that captured that very well. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. That's what makes yeah. <laughs> it's a, but Chad, that's what makes you who you are. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's what life comes at you, but you didn't quit because life came at you. You, you know, you kept going, you kept pushing. I tell, I grew up rough, man. I had a rough childhood, I had a rough upbringing, I had a lot of up and downs and, and it was, I just didn't quit. I just kept going. I get, you know, it, it's people always ask, they're like, wow, can't believe you. You're not dead and in a ditch. I mean, I get, I literally have people, people in my family have said it. They're like, wow. We always say, I heard it when I was a kid. They're like, oh, you're a dreamer. You're going to, you'll end up in jail or dead. That's what's going to happen to you. But, but I never let that stop me. So, so I relate in terms of, but I'm an average, I'm nobody. I'm just a, a guy that will push and I will help anybody I possibly can. And I want everyone to be successful. And I want them to understand that they belong where they're at. Just keep pushing forward and surround yourself with good people. I always tell people that. Well, that's why it's so important for me to make sure that I'm doing like, you know, shows like what you guys are doing, because, you know, I want to be able to reach out to everybody to understand that, like, we are all the same. We are all connected. We all have the same struggles. It doesn't matter what walk of life you're from or whatever status quo you're trying to live up to. You know, whatever things I've been through, you've been through, Chad's been through, right? Sure. There's still going to be more struggles coming tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. 
But the more we overcome gives us the tools to know that we can overcome that as well. And that's all it is. It gives us the experience. You know, I tell, I tell my fighters that you guys have to be able to compete when the shit's not fun anymore, because we all compete. We all train and it's fun when we train, but what happens when your nose is sitting on the other direction? What happens when you can't (laughs) use your arm? And you know, we laugh about it, but the thing is, is it's true though. Only in that moment. It's only in that moment right there that you can make the decision. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep pushing forward because people say, oh, I'm willing to die in there. Shut up. Yeah. Like, that's... <laughs> because here's the thing. You say that right now when there is no struggle. You say that right oh, now yep, when you can yeah. move both your hands. But <laughs> what about when you can't breathe, when your arms aren't able to move and you have a guy standing in front of you that's trying to rip your fucking head off? It's only in that moment that you can decide if you are going to quit or you're going to keep going no matter what. And, you know, I don't care what stage of your life you're in. We're constantly going to be faced with that challenge, right? The pandemic hit us and we had no idea how as a gym owners or business owners, how we were going to handle that. Mm -hmm. We had to stand up and (laughs) fight every single day. And hell, right now we're two years into it. And I feel like I'm still still fighting. fighting. Yeah. Yeah. There is yeah. no playbook. There is no answers. There's nothing, you know, any, anything that goes wrong tomorrow <laughs> could shut my doors down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're adjusting and on the so fly. Of, yeah. That's it. So doesn't everything that I've been through doesn't mean shit. It doesn't. All it's done is give me experience to know that I can keep fighting. Yep. Yeah. hundred percent. Damn. Amen. Hey man, for sure, <laughs> brother. Yeah, no, yeah. and it's good because, because people need to hear it. I mean, we, we live in a world now where it's, you know, it, you know, we all know it's all, it's way different and people are people and it is what it is, but people need to hear truth, good stuff that they can use and utilize in their life and, and understand that we are going through something and you have to be able to adjust on the fly. You don't quit. Keep, keep doing, keep going, keep doing the right thing that you can, you know? So yeah props brother yeah. appreciate it Good so stuff, much man yeah that's well, what i i, I, ahead, I also like real real quick before we go i liked um in your last fight on that documentary how you were kind of talking what you were thinking right that dude you yeah. couldn't sub him right yeah. but you're like i know if i let go he's coming on top right so your mindset i mean it just shows right there how yeah. you know what you're made of right there like you said there's people say i'll die in there and i'll do this and um that but you just kept going man and I think that's, that's the secret, right? It's your inner dialogue is what matters most. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you try to put off your, your image as or how many <laughs> followers you have or how many people you know want to talk to you up. It's the way you talk to yourself. That is the real success. Yep, is once you start talking inside, once you start talking inside, that is what, what matters. And you know when that changed for me, Everything in my life changed. The way I talk to people, the way I associated with myself, and you know the way I approach challenges. Because you know when you realize, oh, I'm not good enough. Well, that's you're doing that to yourself. Yeah. And you know if you're around more and more people <coughs> have that strength of, of overcoming, then you know then you're 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 on the right path. And the sad part is, is that once you start understanding that, your circle gets smaller and smaller. It does. And 100. Uh, percent yep, That's okay. Sure. That's okay. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yep. Yep. Let them go. Like, yep. listen, my my two best friends now are are my wife and a twenty month year old. <laughs> yeah. Right on. You know, like and it's they because, sit at your table. <laughs> you know what I mean, so to yeah, speak. I mean, that's it. You know, and like I can go out there and I can be with the elite athletes, but at the end of the day, I'm with the two people that, that don't judge me. Yeah. You know, right and on. and and I can talk to them the way I talk to myself, and it's it's genuine. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. It's amazing, you know. When you no, it is amazing for sure. You know, when you the 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 days you can finally look in the mirror and be like, "I know that guy." What's up, homie? You're my friend. Yeah, yep. That that that's that's an incredible experience. It's yeah, I relate, brother, because yeah, that's my life changed when I started doing that. When I started that inner you're dialogue and all that you're at the beginning of the journey my man <laughs> so just kid, i mean the reason why i say that is because you're starting to make all these connections now right sure 10 years from now you're going to become such an evolved version of the person you are today 
<clears throat> just keep pushing just and keep pushing. and be and be ready for the journey that you're on because whoever you are right now is not even going to be close to the person you are 10 years from now as you keep pursuing this journey. Nice. Thanks, man. I appreciate that for sure. Well, hey, man, we kept you we're way over an hour. So uh, I know you got to get back to that 20 month old. <laughs> shout out, shout out, shout out um, everything, man. Shout out anything you want. Your, when your book is coming, how everyone can get at you, you know, all of it. And if you got sponsors, sponsors you the gym, have. anything you want, man, it's your, this, we love to do this because we want people obviously get, get it all out there. So everyone can, you know, Hallelujah. Listen, you know, my, my biggest thing, you know, I, I do this a lot and I, I, I like to keep it short. You know, there's, there's a lot of information that's, uh, that's on there out me out, out on me. So I, I, you know, the films out there, uh, go out and watch life of a fighter. It's on uh, fight TV and, um, to be right now. I know we have a whole bunch of distributions that are coming out. Uh, occupation fighter is still out on Amazon. Follow me on uh, Instagram at Chad Savage, George. Uh, on Twitter, it's Savage135. And then the biggest thing that we have coming out, I've got my book coming out, Champion, uh, A Champion's Mindset. And then if you are in the NFT space and crypto space, we have a whole uh, NFT launch coming out for the Jiu-Jitsu community called the Jiu-Jitsu Junkies. So it's on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we are the first uh, Jiu-Jitsu launch in the NFT space for the MMA and Jiu-Jitsu community. It's going to be huge with full nice. utility. So um, I, I can't wait. We're expected to launch with that on the 31st of this month. Uh, it, it's it's going to be amazing. So Jiu-Jitsu Junkies, um, and the, the website for that is Jiu-Jitsu with a hyphen, J-I-U hyphen, Jitsu, NFTs.io. Awesome. Sweet. So good. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you so much, man. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us and chatting and laying down some amazing knowledge, stuff that I will take forever and uh, use it, man. Appreciate you so much. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it, guys. Um, enjoy the weekend. Thanks for having me on. Thanks. And, uh, I, always, I always leave everything with, with uh, you know, being champions of choice and it's up to you what happens next. Right on, brother. Dig it. Cool. All right, my man. Thanks, guys. We'll see Thanks, you brother. Later. All right. Hey everyone, we hope you enjoyed the show today. Remember, go out there and check out all our sponsors. By supporting them, you support the Limitless Radiocast podcast. It helps us bring you guys content each and every week and keeps us going. Thank you and we appreciate you for all you do. Limitless Radiocast is brought to you by True Tubes Tattoo Supply. Limitless 10 at checkout for a 10% discount on all your tattoo needs. They have state-of-the-art equipment for everyday needs in the tattooer's life. Check them out. Remember, stay true. Limitless Radiocast is also brought to you by Magic City Brewing Company. Best beer brewed in the hometown of Akron, Ohio. Check them out. Check out rollamongus.com put in limitless 20 at checkout for a 20 percent discount on all your fight gear needs that's geese lanky geese rash guards spats fight shorts they have t-shirts and accessories check them out great place ran by a great guy also check out battlebomb.com put in limitless 20 at checkout for a 20 percent discount you have cbd and non-cbd rub to rub on those aches and pains from hard training hard work everyday life check them out remember limitless 20 at checkout battlebomb.com